As some of you might know, Deep, I'm not working at Deepop anymore. The company has been sold to Etsy and, and is now part of the Etsy family. So in thinking what to do next, I thought about my previous experiences together with the Deepop experience. And what I thought was, um, I love building communities. I love bringing people together around discovering what's new, what's unique around there. I did it before Depop by uh, launching a magazine with my brother and also a sunglasses brand called Retro Super Future before Depop. And uh, all of these things that I've done uh, before were about bringing creatives together. So I did it with fashion and music. Uh, I did it again with fashion, with Depop. <laughs> and now I thought, uh, let's do it with food. Why food? Um, I think the next 20 years is going to be a very particular moment for the world in a different way. Uh, more sustainable, more healthy, uh, therefore more local. And uh, as we all know, food, uh, big food is broken in a sort of way. Uh, processes and sourcing are becoming more and more opaque and uh, um, quality uh, and health are, becoming, are being sacrificed more and more uh, for the sake of profit in a yeah. sort of way. So what I did was I started observing what was happening around the world and I noticed how these new conscious consumers who want to eat uh, better are uh, discovering and buying from all these small food makers who, ha who do incredibly um, uh, inspiring products from their kitchens. And so um, I noticed this in London, but also in many other cities all across the world. And as I was observing what was happening, I noticed a little spark coming up from that uh, world. And I thought, why don't I bring together these conscious consumers with these ind incredible independent food makers? And I thought, why don't I do it in the same way that I uh, did it with Depop, by creating an app which wants to recreate um, the experience of uh, a virtual food market uh, in your pocket. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, this is uh, more or less the idea behind Delhi. Yeah. yeah. And then I guess for us, our research really started at looking at the history of delicatessens and delis themselves. And you know, through and through, we thought these were 100% American. I guess having seen them in the likes of The Simpsons, in films like Spider-Man, with Saturday Night Live, eating pastrami sandwiches, which we'll come to later. Larry and Curb Your Enthusiasm, of course, Tony's Deli himself, Action Bronson, and then the rumor of this Kanye Deli, which I don't think is happening. <laughs> um, and I think as part of that research, we stumbled across this deli which sounded fantastic to us, and we, we, we brought this forward to Simon, which is Katz's Deli. And uh, we found this clip from a film that shows us how good Katz's really is. <laughs> Delhi is actually originated from Germany, and Simon reminded me just now that they're from Munich. Um, and it really came from immigrant or migrants who were migrating from the war and came over to America. And what was super fascinating is that they started to create this really, I would describe them as like hyper local stores, where they were producing um, meals, uh, bringing across ingredients, uh, naturally processed foods of items that weren't available on an American high street for this local community. And I think, nonetheless, it had such a strong parallel to the app Delhi that sort of Simon had envisioned. Um, and then, I guess, in addition to this, what, was, what seemed really odd, I guess, coming from a, a design perspective and thinking ourselves, as, I guess, is so privileged in how many resources and tools that we have, was this notion that during that time in America that there weren't really any published American typefaces and the American Type Foundry and the U.S. government sort of made this big push to start creating their own their own fonts so that they could rely less and less on the likes of the Helvetica and Gilsand in, in Europe. Subsequently, this font, Franklin Gothic, was one that became synonymous with these delis. Um, I guess due to their sort of ease of use and uh, accessibility reasons. And this is something that we quite quickly realised that we wanted to bring into Delhi the brand. Um, 
And then I guess as part of our pitch, we really wanted to bring in this aspect and culture of food. So we're bringing in these sort of designers that we, we held as really huge pillars in, in, our, in our careers as design, namely Bruno Minari and Zomari. And I think what was really rare in this sort of process and dialogue and connection with Simon was that how attuned he was to these designers and, and artists and how he had so many like first-hand um, interactions with them in the past. I think when we were actually pitching, Simon, you would kind of jump in and talk about Bruno Minari and, and, and your sort of relationship there. Yeah. Um, I was born and raised in Italy, in Milan, um, hence my strange accent despite my English name. Um, and I was always exposed to this uh, cross-contamination between industrial design, fashion, uh, architects, uh, etc. And um, my dream was always uh, when I would grow up to open a design studio and yeah. follow in the paths of designers like Achille Castiglioni, um, Ettore Sozzas, Gio Ponti, but some of my favorites uh, are um, Bruno Munari, uh, Enzo Mari, Marinetti, and um, tying Munari with what we do in Delhi, there is this book that Munari wrote which is called Designer's Art, which has a couple of chapters which always um, stuck with me because they are so interesting in how he describes uh, a particular aspect of uh, two food products. Yeah. He talks about the orange uh, and how, in his opinion, Mother Nature has created the orange as a perfect product with its packaging uh, to protect it, where once you peel the packaging off, the orange is already cut into slices, so you don't need a knife. Uh, and he thinks Mother Nature did that on purpose. And also he thinks that Mother Nature is also a great marketing person because what, they, what she did is she uh, gave you the seeds for free in the orange. So basically when you eat your orange, you can take a seed and plant it and you get more oranges for free. That's which <laughs> I think this is genius. And he talks about, in the same way he talks about the peas, how they come in this super nice pouch which is smooth inside and you open it and all the peas are laid out perfectly. So Mother Nature has thought about a, a really great packaging in that sense, you know. And so this is an example of how um, Bruno Munari thinks yeah. and why I always uh, loved him. Yeah, and I think this is something that we really, again, wanted to bring into this, uh, the Delhi, the DNA. Yeah, so um, one other aspect that ties together everything I did in my past is how to convey the stories of the people that we talk about or um, the, um, the people in our community in general, and that's photography. Um, as I said, m uh, all of my uh, previous businesses were about discovering new talents, uh, up and coming, the most avant-garde, uh, digging underground and looking for the most inspiring ones <coughs> and <coughs> how to portray the, these people to the communities that we were talking to. Uh, uh, the idea is doing it through a photography which represents in the same way this kind of newness. And so we always wanted to work with uh, new up-and-coming photographers and with our magazine we worked with some very uh, uh, good talents like Anna Kras, who now became, is quite uh, famous, or Adriana Glaviano, or Matteo Montanari, who is now quite famous too, yeah. or Nacho Alegre, who then, um, who he sort of worked when he w uh, with when he was at the beginning, <clears throat> and then he carried on founding a magazine called Appartamento Magazine, which also uh, portrays the lives and the houses of uh, uh, creative people in a very, very unique way through this photography, which is uh, quite raw, quite uh, crude, um, very uh, not, not posed, and um, uh, shots taken in the moment, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, ins um, getting inspiration from uh, many other photographers in history, like Jürgen Teller, for example, you know, one of my other favorite photographers. So with uh, Delhi, we decided to do the same, and uh, we started working with some of these photographers too. Yeah, yeah. And then I guess for us, really trying to bring in, I guess, these, like, develop and evolve this principle into Delhi's brand language. 
We sort of reconnected with this book called The Photographer's Cookbook, um, which I'm not sure if you're familiar with, but it's one of these projects that you sort of look at, and for, from my perspective, it's a, it's, a, it's a dream project and one that I really wish I got to be involved in. Um, but most importantly, we, we discovered the works of Barbara Crane, and in particular, this series here, which is called Private Views and Eaters. So here you can see the shots that she took throughout the late 70s and early 80s in New York. And all these were just shots with a, a Polaroid camera. And they just really show this sort of raw relationship and real relationship of um, food and, and between food and people and the sort of overarching society around it. Yeah, so as we were uh, working on the branding together, uh, we started to realize that many of the food makers that we were bringing on board, they were um, doing a, um, something which is, is very well known in the world of fashion, which is the drop. Uh, in fashion, as we all know, brands now drop, whether it's on a Thursday afternoon, like Supreme does, or on the sneakers app, like Nike does. Uh, we, we like to be notified when there's a drop. Yeah, yeah, drops uh, on daily work very well. We have a lot of food makers who drop on specific days. And like the sneakers app by Nike, you can uh, be notified when a drop uh, is live and you can buy them. And many of the sellers, uh, the makers, they sell out uh, within minutes. Mm -hmm. So I guess we're at the final part of the brand process and then Simon drops in the drop culture and brings in the, the reference of fashion. And so we started to look around and understand what the fashion sort of culture was around drops. And I think needless to say, we realized that obviously it wasn't fashion that started it, but we started to, we, we came across this project, which is something that I was super fascinated by, which is actually why dub is Barbara Kruger versus Supreme. And I think it just really communicates the sort of Kruger's response to the fashion brand Supreme that had been appropriating her artistic language over the past uh, couple of decades, where they use it for their logo, the campaign images, and, and so forth. So here you can kind of see Kruger's uh, skate park design. She did um, uh, metro cards, uh, bus facades, and so forth. And then created this um, store where she dropped all these sort of merchandise items from skateboard decks to t-shirts and posters and so on. But as we dive deeper, we realized that the drop culture was most likely came from the music industry. Um, but there was no real recollection as to exactly what sort of drop it was. So there's this notion that it could have been a drop of a vinyl record being released at a store, the drop of a needle landing on a record, or the drop of a beat. Um, so we, thought, we sort of felt that as we were sort of drawing towards the conclusion of the talk, we would just take a, uh, take a little break, have some water, um, and then we'd let Wayne and, Gra Rain and Garth sort of show us the drop of a beat. So this is us sort of in the work in progress phases. Some of these assets are sort of pre-drop culture where Simon just dropped it in, or post after that. And you can see here quite clearly that things like the logo type and typography are very consistent, that that was sort of, that sort of DNA reference of those delicatessens were really strong and, and sort of solid there. Whereas color, photography, that sort of, that really evolved since that drop culture. Things started to become a little bit more vibrant. We punched it up a little bit. Um, and kind of tweaked it for a slightly young, younger and a faster paced audience. You also see we're using sort of these illustrations. Um, these are sort of placeholders from Andrea Samuelson. And these are sort of things that, you know, I guess Delhi's is such a young brand and company that's going to grow so much. And these are sort of elements that we'll look to explore in the future, whether they'll be added in or not. Um, and then we can sort of see the photography, that are the key makers. Yeah, so as I said earlier, one of the key aspects we wanted to portray um, about our community is uh, the kind of raw photography. And in this case, we think it can work uh, even better because we are talking about food products done at home and uh, the rawness or the crudeness of the food or the process of making these products at home 
uh, I think they could match uh, perfectly. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I mentioned Apartamento magazine earlier, and I thought that's what I thought when I, when I started thinking about how we can uh, do this. So we, we talked with uh, Ken, and uh, we decided that this would be the perfect combination. One of those principles. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then here we can start to see how the brand sort of evolves. Um, so these are some visualizations that kind of show like the brand flex. So here you can see the introduction of the drop, what we call the drop bar, uh, which is the deli on the right hand side. Um, and that really references back to the sort of the idea of the drop of vinyl records, um, referencing back to the sleeves that we have on vinyls. And then you can kind of see this color palette coming in, um, which was a really our opportunity to reference back to those sort of designers and artists like Marinetti, uh, Munari, and Mari. Um, so shot here is a uh, Mono de Santos by Caitlin Izola. Um, and then here you can kind of see this La Cucina Chartouze, which is this uh, the sort of primary brand color that it's become now. Um, so here we have the small drop bar uh, sh showcasing um, Mari Red. And this is Decatur shot by Liam Hart. Um, some early visualizations of the app that are sort of expanding on those color palettes. Yeah, the um, colors, um, if I may add, uh, are one of the things that we really enjoyed most about the branding that we did together because um, we worked with uh, many colors in the previous company too and actually even Depop had multiple colors as part of the brand, but different kind of colors, mm -hmm. and we thought um, even at this time, maybe we use more colors to represent the variety of the community, the variety of the food that is represented. And um, we think that they came up with a set of colors which is incredible, very unique, uh, representative of the, the food and uh, the colors of the, the, the community that we have yeah. on board. Yeah. I hope they last well. <laughs> um, and then here, I guess, more of a modular campaign. So. In terms of colors, we have Munari Blue and Crane Beige. Um, here we're just showcasing a drop by Cold Sauce and again photographed by Liam Hart. And I think this kind of showcases the sort of early phases of Delhi as an app and, uh, and as a brand. And I, I guess from Hasso's perspective, it's been you know, brilliant to go on that journey and kind of see where, I, I, as you, and I guess we'll be able to get to see how the brand sort of grows and grows. Um, so we thought we'd just add in our final drop for the night and we'll leave it here. Thank you. Thank you.